The problem is the medical literature that your doctor trusts is now a problem. If I had a heart attack and, uh, you know, it was thought that I needed a stent in my coronary artery, just like any of you, I'm sure I'd like a specialist to do it. That could be a nurse. That's a technician's job. It's repeated the whole time, and you want someone who specializes in just doing that. That's not the biggest medical problem we have today. Life expectancy in the UK is falling. Life expectancy in the United States is plummeting. And the biggest single factor linked to that is the number of drugs you're on. And the biggest single factor linked to that is the number of partialists you've seen who just treat their bit of you and uh, you end up on a drug for it. The issue is not the body, uh, you know, the science of the body and how it works. The issue that faces all of you is the treatments you get. And the problem at the moment is no one's taking an overview of that. Roughly half of you over the age of 50 here are on three or more drugs every single day of the year. Once you go above three, they stop working as well as they worked before. They increase the chances you're going to go into hospital. They increase the chances you're going to die early. They also cause your quality of life to fall. The greatest medical need we have today is to reduce your medication burden. We are all our own big picture and we are the p p people best aware of what we need. But it is difficult, isn't it? Because, you know, in my own case, or in my mum's case recently, she, she's just been diagnosed with giant cell arteritis, or actually a couple of years ago, and it gives her terrible headaches. Um, and, and so she'd been on steroids for a while. You all know the side effects of steroids are not very, but it could, the headaches. It's very difficult to, to know, to, you know, you look at the, the side effects list or what they're supposed to do of any of these drugs. And, and most of us are just not really equipped to be able to deal with that. My own attitude is effectively don't take any treatment unless you really must. And don't go undergo any procedure n n unless you really must. But there are times when we really must. Um, and, and, and then it's hard to know when are those times. I'm, I, I'm, I'm on uh, low dose ACE inhibitors for high blood pressure. I'd much rather not be. Um, but and, and, and they have v basically no effect whatsoever. Perhaps they push up my blood pressure in the long run. I don't know. Why am I on them then? Because, um, because my wife doesn't want me to suddenly have a stroke and die and, let the, uh, and leave her looking after the kids. So I'm not blaming it on her. That argument is one that I cannot refute. She is right. It is utterly selfish of me to say, no, for my own prejudiced reasons, I'm not going to take this. So I've, I've looked into it. I'm keeping an eye on it. I'm more or less resisting having any increase in the dose. Uh, and I have a feeling that I'm probably n not unusual, that most people are innately skeptical of a medical pro profession that are pushing things on them, but grateful if they're in pain or in suffering in one way, for someone to do something to stop it. Okay, well, um, one of the words that hasn't come into play here, we've talked about partialists, specialists, etc., etc., technicians. We haven't talked about professionals. And a professional was a person that's vanished, at least in medicine. It was a person who took responsibility, made a call, and took responsibility for it. Doctors now, for the most part, are bureaucrats. There are guidelines which say this is how you treat and you follow orders. You don't listen to the person who's come into you. You don't try and work out, well, they're making this claim about the drug they've just been put on. You know, they've lowered their blood glucose, which should clear their peripheral neuropathy, and they're saying they're in pain, which is exactly the opposite to what the textbooks say should happen. What a professional would do is listen to you, would work it out, would try and decide if they should be standing with you with this unusual response to the condition you have or not. The problem is fewer and fewer doctors do that because their clinical colleagues won't allow it, the guidelines won't allow it, they'll be referred to the General Medical Council if they're doing anything unusual. They may be struck off. They're no longer professionals. They're bureaucrats. So in terms of getting to grips with the issues, uh, one of the things is uh, you again have a role to play, which is 
doctors going out of business, they're going to be replaced by nurses and technicians if all they are is bureaucrats. There are cheaper bureaucrats. If you want a specialist in the old sense, in the sense of a professional, someone who's going to make a call, yes, I agree with the strange thing this person's saying, and I'm going to try and help them engage with a system that is not going to want to hear what they're saying, then, uh, you know, we don't have that anymore. What we should have, and what we have the resources to have, is a doctor, you bring something unusual in, what you hear again and again the whole time is don't consult Dr. Google or you'll be ill for the rest of your life. What we should have is me encouraging you to go on Google and research it because your motivation to put the problem right will often be greater than the expertise of the, any of the specialists you go to see. It is difficult to know and it's going to get harder to know because ChatGPT is going to give you a coherent answer but is ChatGPT necessarily going to give you an honest or a believable answer or have the Russians sabotaged it or whatever, you know, much that we don't know. Um, and in, in a way it reminded me of what I do, what I said I was doing myself. I blunder around in the undergrowth and, and eventually I formulate a question that I want to know the answer to and I ask someone who really knows what they're talking about. And this is the same thing. I think you do need to take control over yourself you have your own big picture in mind and you, you but but it's very difficult to answer all your own questions I think at some point it would be nice to be able to go to a GP who has some time for you and is allowed to think and is able to say well I, I, in my view I wouldn't do this for that reason and this is probably a very good idea and, and so what that would be saying would well I, I think the whole GP service uh, nobody likes the way it works uh, anymore and if it were to be properly refunded and and and, um, and, and people have time to talk to you for not five minutes but half an hour yeah so we're moving on to solutions here but David yeah. okay what just um, Nick said trust in your doctor the problem is the medical literature yeah. that your doctor trusts is now a problem it's entirely ghostwritten when it comes to unpatent drugs the work that Nick does is not written by medical writers are you know in proper science, there's not <laughs> people writing the science in the best journals with no access to the data behind the claims being made. That's currently the situation in medicine and is getting worse. Now, the problem is doctors haven't woken up to it. Uh, they need to wake up to it. Doctors are practicing according to evidence-based medicine. That sounds wonderful, but it's not evidence-based. It's not based on data that anyone, even the regulator, can access. What we need is something closer to relationship-based medicine, which is listening to the evidence that you produce and your doctor working with you to get what is evidently correct for you, which will often be at odds with what the evidence base says. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.